Yo, what's up viewers of YouTube? Tyler here of Chico Crypto and welcome to another episode of Breaking Down the Blockchain where I bring you some of the best blockchain news and I break it down for you in easy or I try to make it easy and understandable in terms you all can understand. So, here is a phone. At first glance, it looks very much like an Android phone, but in reality, this is an Elastos phone. This is a C++ version of Android. Everything looks very much just like Android. Opening the application WeChat, it works just like we were on an Android phone. But wait, the underlying operation systems are done in C++. What does that mean the operation systems are done in C++? Well, to understand, we need a bit of a historical perspective. Let's jump into the Chico Crypto Time Machine and go back in time. See everybody on the other side. The year is 1986 and the NSF Net project is released based off of the TCP IP protocols and it provides interconnectivity for supercomputers and universities across the United States. The original vision of the internet was pure decentralization, where any computer could connect to the internet without any government or organization's approval. But as we know, that vision has strayed away from the original path. Now, 1992, the year of Bill Clinton, the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan, and people jumping around to the band crisscross. 1992 was also very important in the tech world. A company that went by the name of Sun Microsystems created a programming language that would change the landscape forever. This language was called Java. Let's now jump to the year 2006 and the release of the Java Virtual Machine. This allowed Java applications bytecode to run on any computer architecture through a virtual machine. The network was slowly but surely becoming the computer. We fast forward nine years to 2015 and Ethereum begins their proposal of creating the world computer. A computer that would be based on the blockchain and operations would be executed through the Ethereum virtual machine. This was the beginning of the building of the blockchain computer. This invention was great. We now have a program that is autonomous. It runs by itself with no one controlling it. The control is left up to smart contracts which keep track of things and execute based on certain parameters. But the drawback of the blockchain is it's extremely slow. To produce and secure each block it takes about 10 minutes with Bitcoin and 15 seconds with Ethereum. In the computer world that is an eternity. With the current state of the Ethereum world computer it would be impossible to have applications running because the blockchain computer would not be able to keep up with the transaction throughput. That is why Java and the network computer is still used to this day for applications because of the quick throughput and the blockchain computer development has basically come to a standstill. So there are glaring problems with the internet and the network computer. Within the framework of the network computer, each device can be considered an attack point for hackers since each device is directly connected. And since every device can connect to the internet, there is no way to know who connected to it or what is connected. So now let's combine these three things, the internet, the network computer, and the blockchain computer. Applications can run off of the network computer for transaction throughput and performance. The applications are then connected to each other through people's devices and the internet. Critical details can be held on the blockchain computer like IDs and personal details. Although the blockchain computer is slow, it is secure and you can keep track of everybody and everything. It's an immutable ledger with timestamps and hashing. In addition, the blockchain computer leads to an autonomous execution that can be trusted. With the blockchain, every 10 minutes or 10 to 15 seconds, the history of the internet can be archived, creating in a sense a public notary. There is a record in case of an argument between person A and person B. They can always go back and prove who has what. 
This all creates a new internet where trust is formed with no middleman. Everyone and every device has an ID, yet it is not issued by any government or organization. But with the current shape of Ethereum and Bitcoin, a true operating system for the new internet has yet to be formed. The fundamental design of the internet is flawed, and that is why Elastos was created. To unleash a new way of connecting people to each other. Their devices, their data, and even their money will be connected to each other in the most secure way possible. Now, how is this going to be done? Let's take a deep dive into the Elastos technology to understand. Elastos is a third generation blockchain project, which includes a trustworthy ledger, plus smart contracts, plus monetizable dApps and digital assets. So, the bottom layer of Elastos is the Bitcoin blockchain. This ensures unrivaled safety and reliability, which is ensured by the strong Bitcoin computing power. On top of this lies the Elastos blockchain. The Elastos blockchain is merge mined with the Bitcoin blockchain, which saves resources and avoids repeat consumption. Through this merge mining, Consensus between the two is reached simultaneously. The Elastos blockchain serves as the ID system needed to connect to the Elastos intranet. This means the Elastos blockchain won't need to scale as it's storing simply IDs. These details will be hashed and secured in a way that no other blockchain combination can provide. Sidechains are implemented to avoid main chain overload which leads to easy routing and flexible extension. Merged mining can be implemented to other side chains, which means the chains can be merged recursively, establishing a hierarchy of trust among the chains and leading to almost infinite scalability. On top of the side chains and the lower layer blockchains is the blockchain APIs, smart contracts, and ID services. These smart contracts and services won't be limited by the speed of the main chain, since they will only need to reach consensus on their sidechain. The entire blockchain services of the Elastos architecture connects to the next place, the Elastos Carrier P2P network. This takes over all network traffic between virtual machines and conveys the information on the application's behalf. It will consist of nodes, which can be connected to the regular internet environment. The foundational services within the P2P network include decentralized domain names, decentralized computation, and decentralized storage such as IPFS. So, this is the foundational support for the development of dApps, but it also gives nodes possession of their data and computational power under extreme levels of privacy protection through Elastos ID services. Nodes can rent out their resources, including power and storage, which provides motivation for the Elastos marketplace. On top of the Elastos P2P network carrier lies the Elastos components of the Elastos system structure. This includes the Elastos virtual machine, Elastos runtime, and the Elastos browser. The first layer is a closed runtime environment called the Elastos runtime. The Elastos virtual machine creates a basis for this runtime, but the virtual machine runs on the host operating system. This creates a separation from the host operating system, ensuring safety of data and code. The final piece is the Elastos browser, where the runtime is embedded. This browser allows any web application to run with partial Elastos functions. Since the Elastos runtime runs on the OS of a customer's mobile device, everyday apps are free to run and their performance is not hindered. Elastos supports all traditional programming languages, making it relatively easy to write code. Elastos also supports all popular programming frameworks. So that is why this phone running on C++ is so revolutionary. This all comes together to create one system with many ecologies. Elastos dApps can run, regular apps can run, all within a closed platform that creates a special economic zone where users can feel secure while sharing information and digital assets. This is the beginning of the new internet, the technology that will power the smart economy. It's game changing and we are all on the ground floor. Thanks for watching this episode of Breaking Down the Blockchain. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.